Hello guys, welcome to Online Turkish School lesson number 10. In this lesson we're going to be learning something very important. The present tense, present continuous tense. Now, first of all you need to learn something. Infinitive. Infinitive is the most basic form of a verb. This is also the form you'll find in a dictionary, like to speak, to do, okay? It's the most basic form. Many languages have this future. Like English uses to, to speak, French ir, finir, Italian are, cazzeggiare, Hungarian ni, opako hogarni, German en, fressen, Russian dilat, Korean da, mokta, Norwegian or ospoke, and Japanese uses any uh, word with an u ending like kaku. As you see, many languages have this. How about Turkish? Well, Turkish also has his own way of showing the basic form of a verb. It's mek or mak. And it changes according to, guess what? The vowel harmony. Let's learn some verbs. Yemek, to eat. Yazmak, to write. Çalışmak, to work or to study. We have one verb for both of them. Anlamak. To understand, demek, to tell, içmek, to drink, konuşmak, to speak, okumak, to read, izlemek, to watch, and öğrenmek, to learn. Let's see them all in one place. Yemek, öğrenmek, izlemek, okumak, konuşmak, içmek, yazmak. Anlamak, çalışmak, and demek. Do you remember the meanings? Try to remember them. If you can't remember, it's okay. Just uh, rewind the video and rewatch. All right. Now, watch what I'm going to do. I separated the verbs from their infinitive suffixes. Now, the infinitive suffix, as I said, was mek and mak, and if you separate them, you get the basic a part of the verb which is called the root okay so ye is the root of yemek öğren is the root of öğrenmek and so on now I want to regroup them do you see any pattern here according to what did I regroup them in your opinion doop, 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 doop. well if you notice the verbs in the left hand side their roots all end in a consonant, right? While the other five one, like the other uh, verbs at the right part, they all end in a vowel. Do you see? Now we're going to take these two uh, groups separately when we uh, use them in a present continuous tense. Now let's take these verbs, the first group. So in order to add uh, in order to make, sorry, a verb in a present continuous tense, as in to say, I am doing, I am going, I am learning, etc. This is present tense. That is happening right now. You're going to have to use a specific suffix, ior. Okay? And ior is an e-type suffix, right? So, it has four forms. Uyor, uyor, and uyor as well. You're going to have to choose according to the verb. But, of course, first, you have to omit the infinitive suffixes, okay? So first step is acquiring, obtaining the root. And then add ior and change it according to the vowel harmony. So we get öğren ior, right? Because of the e. Konuş uyor, iç ior, yaz uyor, çalış uyor. Alright, this is our harmony, it should be simple. Now, how about the other group? Those that end in a vowel. Anlamak, izlemek, okumak, yemek, demek. Now, we again omit the infinitives and get the root. Anla, izle, oku, ye, de. Now, what you should do is a little different here. It's pretty similar, but there's one more trick. Now, as you see, these end in vowels. And the suffix we're going to add, eor, uyor, 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 those also add, start in a vowel. 
So if you add them directly, there's going to be a double vowel, a vowel clash, and we don't want that. So what we do is erasing the final vowels of these roots. So we get, when we erase them, we get andl, isl, ok, y, d, right? We omitted, omitted the vowels. And now add the suffixes. So we get anlıyor, izliyor, okuyor, and now with y, y and d, we don't have any vowel to make a vowel harmony, right? According to what vowel are we going to do that? We don't have a vowel, so we just use the neutral form, yor, yor and dior, okay? That's that. Now, uh, I summarize, if the root ends in a consonant, you just directly add eor, 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 okay? But if the uh, verb root ends in a vowel, first omit those vowels, omit them, and then add eor, eor, etc. Now, we're not done. After you did all that, you have to add the personal suffixes, as in the specific suffix for each person, I, you, he, she, etc. So, for the first person, ban, you add um in the end. For sen, you add sun. For o, you don't add anything. It just stops at ior. For biz, you add uz. For sis, you add sunus. And for onlar, you can leave it without adding anything. Or, you can add the plural suffix lerlar. But it's not necessary. Many people don't do that, okay? So we have the personal suffixes. Now let's conjugate. It's called conjugation, by the way. To use the verb in for each person is called conjugation. Let's conjugate the verb öğrenmek to learn. Now, first of all, you omit the infinitive and you get the root, öğren. Now, öğren ends in a consonant, so we have no problem. We directly add ior. <coughs> now, the personal suffixes. Ben. Öğreniyorum. I am learning, or I learn. Sen öğreniyorsun. You are learning. O öğreniyor. He, she, it is learning. Biz öğreniyoruz. We are learning. Siz öğreniyorsunuz. You all are learning, and onlar öğreniyorlar. They are learning. By the way, I just remembered in spoken language. We um, don't pronounce the R in ior in most cases, like uh, for sen, the second one, sen öğreniyorsun is usually pronounced without the R. So sen öğreniyorsun, sen öğreniyorsun, we skip the R. O öğreniyor, okay, siz öğreniyorsunuz. For ben and biz, that is not possible because if you omit the R, then you have all uh, two vowels together. Ben öğreniyor um. So in that, we don't do it, but in the others, we do. So what we pronounced here is this. Ben öğreniyorum, sen öğreniyorsun, o öğreniyor, biz öğreniyoruz, siz öğreniyorsunuz, onlar öğreniyorlar. So, for the first one and the fourth one, as in for I and we, we pronounce the R. But for the other ones, we just skip it, okay? If you want, you can always pronounce it. But if you perfectly imitate a Turkish person, uh, you're going to get used to skipping those R's, okay? That's the modern language. If you want to do it, you're going to be perfect. If you don't do it, you're going to be very perfect, okay? <laughs> So, your choice. Now, a verb from the second group. Anlamak, to understand. Now, what you do is again the same. You omit the infinitive and get anla. But the problem here is that the root ends in a vowel. So, we omit that one too. Anl. Now, add the ior, which becomes uyor according to the vowel harmony. Now we add the personal suffixes. 
Ben anlıyorum, sen anlıyorsun, o anlıyor. Biz anlıyoruz, siz anlıyorsunuz, onlar anlıyorlar. But a Turkish person would say, ben anlıyorum, sen anlıyorsun, I skip the R, o anlıyor, biz anlıyoruz, siz anlıyorsunuz, onlar anlıyorlar. <coughs> okay, your choice. If it is hard to remember when to omit the R, well, you can always pronounce it and that will be perfect. Okay. So our formula is, when you have a verb, X, Mac, and Mac. X is the verb root, right? So first of all, we omit the infinitive and get the verb root, X here. And then you have two choices. I mean, there's, there are two possibilities. First one, X either ends in a consonant or ends in a vowel, right? So if X ends in a consonant, then you add your and harmonize it, of course. If, however, X ends in a vowel, first you omit that vowel and then add your, okay? Which you also harmonize. When you do all these steps, you add the personal suffixes and ta-da, output, okay? You have conjugated your verb according to your person. Now, there's another very important thing to learn. It's about the syntax. Turkish have free word order. Now, what does this mean? Free word order means the ability of changing the order of the words in a sentence without changing the meaning. Now let's see. Let's say that we see a dog biting the man and we have this idea now in our minds. Okay, the dog bites the man. How can we utter this? How can we say it? We can say, the dog bites the man. Can we change the word order here? Can we say, the man bites the dog? Yes, as a matter of fact, we can say it. It has a sense. But this wasn't our idea in our mind. This isn't what we saw. So the meaning changed. Therefore, in English, you don't have, we don't have free word order. We can change the order of the words as we want. In Turkish, however, things are a little different. When we see a dog biting the man, we don't have to think about the word order. We can say, the dog bites the man, the man bites the dog, the man the dog bites, the dog the man bites, bites the dog the man, and bites the man the dog. And in Turkish, all of these sentences mean the dog bites the man. We don't even have to worry about the word order. We always know who bites and who is bitten. In Turkish, we have a future, and thanks to that, all these sentences mean the same thing and all these sentences tell us that the dog bites the man. Now, how do we understand it? It is called accusative. Wow, that's a big word, right? Accusative. Accusative means marking the object. Now, in the sentence, the dog bites the man, the dog is called the subject. It is the one who does the action, who bites. And the man is the object. It is the object that the dog bites. It is the man. Now, think about a future that always shows the object in a sentence. Let's say that in English we say the dog bites the man and there is this little thing that says that the man is the object in the sentence. Wouldn't that be cool? We would always know who is being bitten. Let's say that the sentence were, were like this. The man, which is the object, bites the dog. And when you see it, you would understand, ah, oh, okay, the man is in the beginning, but it says it's the object. So something else is biting. Okay, the dog. The man is being bitten by the dog. Okay, so the dog bites the man. Or you could say, the dog, the man, which is the object, bites. That would be cool too. We know who the object is, the man. Okay, so the dog does the action. The dog, the man bites, okay? 
So thanks to this feature in Turkish, we always know who is being bitten and who is doing the biting. Okay. Now how do we show this object? We have a marker, object marker, and it is E. Whatever the object is, you add E to it. And this is an E type suffix, of course. So it becomes U, U, U as well. Okay. And if the verb word ends in a vowel, we don't want two vowels, so we squeeze a Y. Let's see. Let's see. I take the example. I am eating the hamburger. Now, let's take the Turkish word for this sentence. I is ben. I am eating is yiyorum from the word yemek. And the hamburger is hamburger. It's the same. Now, what am I eating? The hamburger. So, it is the object. So, we're going to have to mark it. We're going to show the object. So, hamburger plus e, because that is the object marker. So, what we get is ben yiyorum hamburgeri. It is simple, right? I, I am eating and the object that I'm eating is hamburger, so I'm marking it. So it is crystal clear what is the object in this sentence. It is hamburger, because it, uh, it has the E at the end. Now we have the sentence ben yiyorum hamburgeri, I'm eating the hamburger. But since it is perfectly clear which is the object, I can uh, easily change the word order without worrying that the meaning will change. So I can say hamburgeri yiyorum ben. Hamburgeri is in the beginning, but it's the object, and I know it because it has an e. Or I can say ben hamburgeri yiyorum. Or I can say yiyorum hamburgeri ben. But the most neutral, pay attention, I'm not saying natural, I'm saying neutral, means it is the most basic form of the sentence, is in Turkish, it's usually subject and then object, and then verb. So, ben hamburgeri yiyorum is the most neutral form of a sentence. As in, you don't stress any particular thing. Okay. Usually in Turkish you can change, I mean always you can change the word order, but every time you change it, the meaning stays the same, but you stress a different element. Like, in the first sentence, ben yiyorum hamburgeri stresses that I am doing the action and not anyone else. If I say hamburgeri yiyorum ben, means, it means I'm eating the hamburger and not something else. Well, we, of course, understand it subtle in a subtle way. Um, the word order ch doesn't change the meaning, but it changes, it changes the stress. So that's that. If you don't want to stress particularly anything, then the most neutral form is subject and then put the object and then the action. Okay, so in Turkish we usually say I, the hamburger, am eating. It's going to sound a little Tarzan, Tarzanish to your ears, I know, but in time you'll get used to it. So a Turk would normally say Ben hamburgeri yiyorum and uh, you know in Turkish we don't usually we don't have to use the subject pronouns because from the verb we already understand who is doing the action so you just omit the ban and hamburgeri yiyorum is a perfect Turkish sentence I, I am eating the hamburger five words in English hamburgeri yiyorum two words in Turkish you see Turkish is really an econom economical language you use much less uh, words. Now I want you to pay attention to something. If a word is an object, we mark with an E as I said. But if it is necessary, you do the vowel harmony. Like bilgisayar becomes bilgisayar because of the A. Now if the word ends in a vowel, like su, if you directly add the suffix, it will be su i two vowels, we don't want that, we squeeze a Y, and then of course uh, harmonize, never forget the harmonization, so we get suyu, the water, like I'm drinking the water, it's an object, 
or you say pizza. In Turkish, we pronounce it pizza, not pizza. Pizza plus a, you squeeze a y, and then harmonization, pizza. -y. Now, of course, don't forget the consonant harmony. If a word ends in a pe, che, te, a ketchup consonant, since this is a suffix that starts with a vowel, there is going to be consonant harmony at times. Like kitap, the book, becomes kitab, okay? Or köpek, the dog, becomes köpeyi, alright? Don't forget this. And a very important rule, the adjectives never change, okay? In some languages, like in German or in Russian, where they also had the accusative, the object form, they change the words, but if there's a and if there's an adjective that's qualifying that word, that also changes. In Turkish, this never happens. Adjectives are invariable. So, if you have büyük köpek, a big dog, if you make it object like I see a big dog then the dog is object but the adjective never changes so the accusative form of büyük köpek is büyük köpeği köpek changes but the büyük doesn't change okay it's an adjective adjectives never change don't forget especially Russian people okay or who else Germans <laughs> German learners don't change it Greeks you also change the adjectives don't change it especially the people who come from these countries pay especially attention okay adjectives never change just change the now and now homework you translate these sentences to Turkish don't forget the rule of thumbs don't forget vowel harmony don't forget consonant harmony don't forget object form okay and what else yeah that's it <laughs> don't forget these I'm going to give the answers in the next lesson but if you want you can always send me your uh, answers by personal message PM and I'll correct them all right did you know that English also has accusative? Old English, I mean the English of 11th, 12th century, had declensions, cases like accusative, dative, etc. But modern English doesn't have it, except for one place. In one specific area, we do indeed use accusative form in English, and that is the subject pronouns. I, you, he, she, it, we, they. These are called subject pronouns. And when they are object, like you understand I. We don't say it right. We have to use object. We say me. So when they're object, some of them at least change. Like I changes to me. You doesn't change. He changes to him, she to her, etc. So when they're object, we use a different form indeed. So English really has accusative as well, although it's much more limited compared to Turkish. We, I mean, even the uh, question word who as an accusative form, whom, although it's not really uh, obligat obligatory to use it, it's optional. But anyway, it has it. Now, a very similar thing exists in Turkish. We learned how to make accusative the normal nouns, like I eat the hamburger. We added e. Now, how about the normal subject pronouns? How do we do that? Now, in order to say sentences like I love you, he loves me, etc. We're going to have to make accusative the subject pronouns as well. Let's learn them. Now the Turkish subject pronouns are ben, sen, o, bis, is, onlar. These are I, you, he, she, etc. If we want to say me, you, him, her, we're going to say beni. See, we added e. <laughs> the same thing. Seni, onu. Pay attention, it's onu, specific, uh, exceptional, let's say. Ono can mean him, her, or it. Okay, we don't differentiate it in accusative either. Busy, us, sizi, you, onları, them. And the question word kim, who, becomes kimi, whom, like whom do you see, etc. So let's try the sentence. I understand you. 
understand is anlamak in Turkish. So, ben seni anlıyorum. Subject, object, verb. S-O-V. Subject, object, verb. This is the neutral sentence. You understand me. This time the subject is you and the object is me. So, sen beni anlıyorsun. Of course, a normal Turkish person would say anlıyorsun. So, sen beni anlıyorsun. We skip the R. It's simple, right? Um, the syntax in Turkish isn't really so much Chinese to you anymore. You are, are learning the bits of Turkish slowly. Now your second homework. We're going to translate these sentences to Turkish. Pay attention. Who is the subject and who is the object? And for starters, I suggest that you build the sentences in the order of subject, object, verb. Okay. Some of the sentences you might not know the verbs, but I gave them in a parenthesis. So that's it. You can send me your answers by private message. Now one more thing, uh, one more detail. Now we learned that ev house, right? In accusative ev, we learned that in this lesson. And araba, since it ended in a vowel. We said Arabaya with a Y, a helper consonant. Now these are normal words. If, however, we have constructions like John'un evi, John's house, or Carlin Arabas, Carl's car, these are called possession or genitive. Now, if we want to make them object, what we're going to do is actually adding accusative to a genitive construction. This is genitive, and when you add accusative, it's going to be genitive plus accusative. Two cases. Now, if there are two cases like that, we separate them, not with a Y, but this time with N. So, if I want to say, I see John's house, then John's house is the object. I'm going to make accusative. But it's a genitive already. I mean, it's not in simple form. Therefore, we separate the two cases by an N. So, between two vowels, if there's an N, it means we separated the two cases there. Okay? So, John'un evini. John's house in accusative form. Karl'un arabasını. Okay? If two cases, we don't use Y but N instead. Let's see. The simple form, like araba, ev, bilgisayar, hamburger, simple form or dictionary form is called nominative noun form if you make it accusative you add a y if by coincidence the word ends in a vowel of course in genitive however the construction always ends in a vowel like John Araba S U or Carlin Evi E when you make it accusative instead of y you add an n and means we separate the two cases. So a normal word accusative, you add a Y if it is necessary. But genitive construction plus accusative, you add an alright. Homework. Translate these sentences to Turkish. He sees Jack's computer. Remember, Jack's computer is in genitive normally possession. And you're going to make it accusative. Don't forget the trick. I love his friend. His friend is a uh, genitive also. She understands the teacher. Pay attention, there is no genitive here. There is no possession. However, in the following one, she loves their teacher. Their teacher is genitive because it's possession. Okay, so pay attention to these tricks and try to translate them and send me your work. One final thing, <laughs> please don't hate me. I know I taught many things in this lesson, but one final thing. Now, there are two sentences here. I see the house and I see a house. What is the difference? In the first sentence, it is a house that we know, okay? It's a definite house. And in the second one, it's an indefinite house. A house, just some house, right? House. Now, in Turkish, we don't have the article the. 
the. So how are we going to make the difference? There is a way to do it. Now I said that the, I said that mark the object in the sentence, but the real deal is we mark the definite object. If it um, if an object is definite, we mark it. If not, we don't mark it. Let's see. I see the house is ban av görüyorum because it's definite. It's an accusative. However, I see a house is ban bir ev because a house, one house. Ben bir ev görüyorum. Now, since it's not a definite house, we don't have to. We, we're not showing anything. It's just some house, an idea in our mind. Therefore, we don't mark an accusative. Now, this might seem a little weird. The rule is, if you have bir means a n or one, and then noun, you almost never make it an accusative. There are very rare cases that we do it, but for now, for starters, learn that be plus noun is never accusative. All other objects are accusative, okay? If the object is preceded by be, just leave it like that. Don't put an accusative. Just a crude rule. That's it. And I'm leaving you guys to study these, alright? And I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.